At the time of recording, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is only days away from premiering on Disney+. Plus. It's the second of the Disney Plus MCU shows, but they aren't the only MCU series we've gotten over the last decade. Indeed, Marvel Television has released some great shows and some stinkers since 2013, so let's get into it, shall we? I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and here is every MCU show ranked from worst to best. Number 13. Inhumans. Oh, the Inhumans. What a sad time you had trying to replace the X-Men for that specific three-year period during the 2010s. How glad we all are that it is over. <laughs> Unfortunately, this live action take on the Inhumans fell flat from pretty much the moment the first piece of promo art was revealed. With its core crew looking more like low rent cosplayers than big budget TV stars, the initial character designs and costumes were enough to already have many fearing for the series. Plus, look at Lockjaw. Look at how they massacred my boy. And sadly, those fears would soon be realized once Inhumans started to air and delivered a dull, dragging experience from episode to episode. No wonder ABC opted to axe the series rather than move forward with the second season. Number 12, Hellstrom. While the larger scope of the MCU has recently taken on a more mystical, magical turn with One Division, one other quote unquote new series with similar elements at play was Hellstrom, which I bet barely any of you even realized was a thing. Unlike WandaVision though, Hellstrom proved to be a complete and utter dud, and Marvel Television pulled the plug on the show just two months after its first season arrived on Hulu. Anna Hellstrom was a far more engaging presence when on screen compared to her brother, but she alone wasn't enough to save the series from being an absolute stinker of an adaptation. Not only did Hellstrom feel extremely subpar in regards to the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe, it also felt extremely subpar for a supernatural show, period. Number 11, Iron Fist. I mean, what else can you say about Iron Fist other than that it was just a really bad, bad show? Finn Jones as Danny Rand, bad. Jeff Loeb's Comic Con outfit thing, also bad. If Daredevil and Jessica Jones were itchy and scratchy, let's put it that way, then Iron Fist was the poochie we all couldn't wait to perish traveling back to its home planet. And look, Iron Fist can be done well, as Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, and Michael Lark's comic showed, but this, this just wasn't it. Number 10. Runaways. Be it on TV or in the pages of a comic book, the concept of Runaways is a genius one. A group of teenage strangers coming together after discovering their parents are no good nefarious supervillains. And I mean, we've all been there, right? When it was announced that ABC would be bringing this young team to live action life for Hulu in 2017, hope was high that this fun comic could be spun into an equally fun TV show. And in comparison to some of the other offerings featured on this list, Runaways was a relative success for the sheer fact that it got three seasons before the decision was made to finally bring it to a close. Things really hit a nice rhythm by the time of the second season and carried on throughout the series' third and final year. Number 9. Cloak and Dagger. Part love story, part coming of age teen drama, part superhero shenanigans, Freeform's Cloak and Dagger series looked to introduce the show's two titular young heroes into the mainstream of the MCU. Set in the Big Easy, Cloak and Dagger found Olivia Holt's Tandy and Aubrey Joseph's Tyrone as superpowered kindred spirits on a mission of self discovery. That mission soon had the pair realizing that their abilities complemented each other's and that they work far better in tandem than on their own. On the whole, the series embraced the relatively unknown nature of its titular twosome and was able to create an interesting emotional narrative that didn't have the pressures of certain other more popular properties. Here's hoping there's a future for them in the upcoming MCU projects. Number 8, The Defenders. The Defenders really should have been better than it ended up being. That isn't to say the series didn't have its upsides. I mean, Charlie Cox and Kristen Ritter are yet again superb as Matt Murdock and Jessica Jones respectively, but in no way was the show able to rise to the occasion. Wasting Madame Gao and forcing everyone who loved the other three Netflix shows to sit down and listen to Danny say, I am the Iron Fist, over and over 
and over. It still has the production quality of the other MCU Netflix shows, and there's no way a man of culture could turn down the prospect of some Sigourney Weaver-themed Marvel action, but my only fond memory of the series is the part where Daredevil beats up Iron Fist. Number 7. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Once Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got going, it really, really got going. It became an enjoyable slice of spies and superheroes television with loads of sci-fi and eventually supernatural elements thrown in. At the get-go though, one of the problems the show faced was its sheer length. For the first five seasons of its seven-year run, the series put out 23 episodes per season, which meant that S.H.I.E.L.D. could become a daunting prospect as opposed to the more streamlined Netflix series that shortly followed. But when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was on form, it was great. It's just that there were a few too many bumps in the road for the series to truly enter that top tier bracket of the truly great MCU shows. Number 6. The Punisher Across the pantheon of Marvel comics, Frank Castle is easily one of the most fascinating characters on the table, and John Bernthal can proudly count himself as the one actor who's best been able to embody both the ferocity and the hidden compassion of the character in live action. Those two seasons obviously brought the most brutal action seen in any MCU TV show to date, yet the brilliant Burnthor managed to bring the vulnerability of the clearly damaged Frank Castle to the fore, rather than the series just being violent for violence sake. And yeah, I know, season 2 may have been a bit of a letdown overall, but the first season is still top tier Marvel. Number 5. Agent Carter Agent Carter is one of the more frustrating shows of the MCU, not in regards to quality, I mean it had that in abundance, but more for the fact that the sheer viewership figures of the series were so damn disappointing. Picking things up with Hayley Atwell's Peggy Carter in a post-Captain America The First Avenger climate, the premise of Peggy fighting to be a strong female figure in a 1940s landscape draped in sexism is a highly provocative one that had so much potential left to give. Having premiered in 2015, Asian Carter did do enough to warrant a second season, but the handling of said season by ABC meant that it was often hard or next to impossible possible to actually track the series down to watch it, which obviously meant it got cancelled shortly thereafter. Even now, years after its cancellation, there's still a great sense of what if that surrounds Agent Carter. Hayley Atwell deserved better, I think we can all agree. Number 4. Luke Cage Luke Cage was the third of the Marvel Netflix shows to arrive, and it was a series that majestically maintained the high quality set by its predecessors, Daredevil and Jessica Jones, at least for the first half of its first season. With Mike Coulter in the titular Luke Cage role, audiences finally got to see this true fan-favorite character brought to life in live action. Clearly Coulter brought the character's physique to the table for the Luke Cage role, but his delivery, inflection, and mannerisms also meant that he was an inspired choice to show the entire intelligence, calmness, and sheer coolness of the character. And again, yes, the latter half of the first season and parts of the second season were pretty disappointing, but that first half of season one is still some of the best MCU storytelling we've ever seen. Number three. WandaVision. While other MCU shows have taken place within the backdrop of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, WandaVision was the first series to genuinely feel like a true part of the shared realm. Of course, that's largely down to the fact the show is headed up by two bona fide Avengers in the form of Wanda Maximoff and Vision, who are played expertly by Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany, respectively. Having previously been part of just ensemble pieces, it made for great TV to see Wanda and Vision take center stage, finally. The way the series also handled Wanda's grief made for an incredibly engaging and poignantly heartbreaking watch. Plus, that Agatha all along song is never going to leave my brain ever, I have made my peace with it. Number 2. Jessica Jones The second and third seasons of Jessica Jones were both great to watch, but that initial season and the haunting figure of David Tennant's Kilgrave stood out as something incredible. Tennant was just magnificent in the role of the Purple Man, but the way he was written to have scarred Jessica made for some tense, gripping, and powerful genre TV. And of all the MCU shows that have been cancelled in recent years, Jessica Jones is right up there as one of the series that many are hoping to make a comeback somewhere further down the line. Plus, with Daredevil rumored to have a role in Spider-Man No Way Home, that offers up a glimmer of hope that we may, just may, see Kristen Ritter's Jessica back in action at some point. Maybe in She-Hulk? And number one. 
Daredevil. Because of course it's Daredevil. It was always going to take something special to top this list, and special is a term that is certainly applicable when talking about Marvel's Daredevil. Of course, I'm going to be biased here because Daredevil is literally my favourite comic book character of all time, but come on. Before Watchmen, I don't think we've ever gotten a more faithful or brilliant comic book adaptation. Pulling direct inspiration from Marvel Comics, and in particular the runs of Frank Miller, Brian Michael Bendis, and Alex Maleev, audiences were given the full Daredevil experience whether it was the relationship with a lecturer in the hand, or Matt and Foggy being the best damn avocados at law there ever was. And then there was Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fisk. While Charlie Cox obviously captured everything that makes Daredevil such a fascinating character, D'Onofrio's Kingpin was delivered just as well, if not maybe slightly better than his rival. The powerhouse actor brought the physicality, the charisma, and the fear factor to Fisk in a way that positioned him as one of the greatest ever villains the MCU has ever seen. Don't mess with my feelings, Marvel. We need Daredevil and the gang back in the MCU as soon as possible. And those were all the MCU TV shows ranked from worst to best. Which one is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe to World Culture so you don't miss all our MCU coverage in the weeks ahead. I've been Ewan, love to you all, and I will see you next time. Bye!